Hello and welcome to Crime Chronicles. Today we'll be taking a look at the life and crimes of Dave Courtney. How did a South London gangster, who was affiliated with the craze, achieve notoriety as a knuckle-duster-wielding debt collector before becoming an actor and character immortalised in lock, stock and two smoking barrels? He was a reformed gangster and had become a friendly face in modern times. But if you believe all of the stories, he had a colourful, violent past. Sadly, his full throttle life came to a sudden end on the 22nd of October 2023, when Dave Courtney was found dead at his home with a gunshot wound to his head. Dressed in a smart suit and usually with a mischievous grin on his face, in recent years Dave Courtney had become the face of old school London gangsters. The 64-year-old had turned his back on the world of crime and was a reformed figure. He had become a prolific author, filmmaker and actor, often appearing in gritty films containing criminal situations similar to those he had experienced during his colourful life. Public appearances were always a chance for Courtney to play up to the gangster role he relished. His dapper attire and no-nonsense persona were always guaranteed to make him the centre of attention. But the police were never far away, regularly hauling him into court over a multitude of charges, including possessing live ammunition. Dave was born in Bermondsey, South East London in 1959 and endured a tough upbringing. He attended Adamsrill Primary School in Sydenham during the 1960s, at a time when old school London gangsters led rock star lives. Gangsters of the time, such as the Cray Twins, were deeply embedded within the post-war London underworld. They were kingpins of organised crime, feared for their enforcement of protection rackets, armed robberies, arson attacks and murders. In the East End of London, these gangsters were photographed like pop stars, courted Hollywood stars as owners of nightclubs and murdered their way to the front pages of the tabloids. It was in this world that Dave Courtney grew up and thought, that's the job for me. During his formative years, he worked many jobs with underworld connections. Courtney became infamous as a knuckle-duster-wielding debt collector and notorious as a London doorman. He also claims to have been shot, stabbed and had his nose almost bitten off. When Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels came out in 1998, he watched amused as moments from his own life were immortalised in film. Writing in one of his books, he recalled, I banged the lid of the sunbed down on him and whacked him hard four or five times. The perspex behind his head shattered. I waited until he came round enough to hear me. Listen, you ever take a liberty again with a mate of mine and never mind the sunbed tan, I'll spit roast you. I think I got the message across, judging by the terrified look in his eyes as I walked out, he continued. If that little incident sounds a little familiar to you, it's because they later used it in the film Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, with Vinnie Jones playing a gangster very similar to Dave Courtney. Although we have romanticised the East End gangster lifestyle, many of the real stories are barely spoken about. During the filming of an unaired interview in 2006, Courtney was asked if he had ever killed someone. He answered, I'm afraid I have, before quickly adding, I don't consider myself a murderer. Courtney went on to explain that he had worked as hired muscle in Holland. His job was to look menacing while illicit transactions were taking place, ensuring that his employer wasn't assaulted or robbed. He joked that obviously he didn't do his job properly as his employer was shot and killed during the deal. He went on to say that up until that point he had never seen a person die in front of him. During the same interview, Courtney goes on to speak about the most violent nights of his life, admitting he had had a few of them. He explained that the most painful was on a day when he'd had his nose bitten off. There are not words in the dictionary made for me to tell you what that felt like, he said. This incident started when a fight erupted in a nightclub between Courtney referred to as a criminal of the underworld and an alleged drug dealer. We were both pretty good fighters, 
He was a lot heavier than me. My plan was as soon as I see him on sight, pull out both knuckle dusters and turn the geezer into a blancmange, he said. He was getting out of my hands and then he looked at me and said, sorry, Dave. And I said, sorry for what? And he bit me on my nose. It was like an electric shock. Dave Courtney was the consummate storyteller. So make your own mind up about his claims to have been found not guilty in 19 separate trials. We can confirm that in January 2009, he was given an 18 month conditional discharge at Bristol Crown Court on the previously mentioned charge of possessing live ammunition without a firearms certificate. We can also confirm that in 2004, he was cleared of attacking his wife Jennifer Pinto over an alleged lesbian affair. Four years earlier, he also walked free from the Old Bailey after he was cleared of being part of a plot to plant cocaine on an innocent woman. During that trial, he was named as a registered police informant using the alias Tommy Mack. Courtney insisted he simply took advantage of the system to disguise a relationship with a corrupt detective. I have never been a grass, he said. Author Bernard O'Mahony and Frankie Fraser, a former member of the notorious Richardson gang, have both accused Courtney of embellishing and fabricating his criminal record and position in the underworld. However, Courtney denied overstating his past. Courtney used his underworld stories in a series of books, such as Stop the Ride, I Want to Get Off, Raving Lunacy, Dodgy Dave's Little Black Book, and many more. He also made a living from television documentaries and personal appearances, and has also acted in a number of feature films. Dave Courtney referred to himself as Dave Courtney OBE, One Big Ego and had a painted depiction of himself as a knight in his South London house, which he called Camelot Castle. It was at Camelot Castle, which was decorated with guns, swords and suits of armour, that Dave Courtney was found shot dead on Sunday, October 22nd, 2023. Although police are investigating, it appears that the gunshot wound was self-inflicted and reports indicate that Courtney had been diagnosed with cancer. This is a sad end for a man who may, or may not, have been a big part of the criminal underworld. Whether you believe his stories or not, the world is now missing a truly interesting character. Thank you for joining us for this story. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and help us by subscribing to the channel. Don't forget to click the bell to ensure you're notified of more great content from Crime Chronicles.